What's going on everybody? I'm Jory Goodman of The Time Teller. So guys, I have a full playlist dedicated to things like everything I wish I knew before buying a quartz watch, everything I wish I knew before buying a Rolex, things like that. And people have been having a lot of fun watching those episodes, but I'm still getting a ton of new watch collectors to, you know, join us here on this channel. And they often show up in my live streams asking me questions that I wish I had an immediate episode for. So guess what guys, in this episode, we're gonna take a look at 10 mistakes every watch collector makes. So hopefully, uh, if you're watching this episode, this will steer you clear away from some of these kind of silly mistakes. It's 3.59 p.m., let's get down to business. Right, 10 mistakes every watch collector makes. Now the first one is kind of the elephant in the room, impulse buying, okay? That's like, come on, this literally is rule number one. Just don't impulse buy. Don't buy the first thing you see, guys, okay? I know there's gonna be some watches that you get excited about, especially when you're very new into the hobby. Uh, you're gonna be kind of wanting to grab everything, and believe me, that feeling doesn't really change. <sighs> You know what, just don't start watch collecting, actually. No, but seriously, all jokes aside, guys, uh, when you break that seal and you buy your first watch, you're immediately gonna wanna pick something else and then you're immediately gonna wanna pick up something else. But guess what, guys, please, please, just take your time, watch some episodes on YouTube from my channel, from a bunch of other people's amazing channels, uh, and then read, you know, look at pictures, try to find out what you might be interested in before you actually go ahead and spend your hard-earned cash. So don't be scared to learn, don't be scared to ask questions, don't don't be scared to take some time before you buy your own watch for yourself and uh, yeah, just chill a bit. Find out what you like and then you'll be very happy with your first purchase. So don't impulse buy. But the number two mistake that a lot of watch collectors actually make is far, far more painful than impulse buying, but no one wants to talk about it, okay? And uh, if there was an elephant in the room, which was impulse buying, the elephant's evil shadow impulse selling. Guys, hear me out. After you impulse buy something, and let's say you kind of fall out of love with that item, it doesn't typically hurt that bad, okay? Oh, sure, there's some buyer's remorse. What are you gonna do? You're just gonna sell that product, get rid of it, right? Oh, I bought this watch, I don't really like it. All right, eh, I'm gonna give it away, I'm gonna sell it, whatever. But have you ever sold something that you really, really regret selling, and then you come to realize you're probably not going to be able to find another one, that is much more painful. I'm gonna be honest, okay? Uh, in my dealings with various watch collectors and just being in this whole orological space, uh, I hear a lot of stories of some buyer's remorse and people are like, yeah, I got this watch and I didn't like it and it took me a little while to sell it and uh, I lost a few bucks, but whatever. It just wasn't for me. But when you hear another man talk about something he wishes he never got rid of, it makes you want to cry. So guys, please, please don't impulse buy, but definitely do not impulse sell. The third mistake watch collectors make is jumping right into vintage watch collecting from the get-go. Okay, listen, I'm a huge vintage guy. You know I have a little thing called the Time Teller Shop, but I still would not recommend brand new watch collectors to just immediately start gobbling up vintage watches. It's just a very different game and it can turn into a mind field. But let's say you did what I told you to do. Let's say you didn't buy anything yet, you're trying to learn as much as possible, and you're finding yourself very, very into vintage watches, uh, then fine, maybe that is where you want to go, but take a little bit more time, ask a few more questions. You got to do even more homework uh, than you would if you were to buy a modern watch, because again, there's a lot of authenticity issues. There's a lot of issues just when it comes to the health of a various you know, piece you're looking for for, uh, it can be a very big headache, but once you get a hang of it, it can be the most rewarding thing ever, and that's why vintage watch collecting is my favorite part of watch collecting. All right, the number four mistake that watch collectors tend to make is uh, getting caught up in these kind of rules and groupthink. And I know this episode right now sounds like a list of rules, but hear me out, okay? Nothing I say here is absolute. 
I'm a human, I'm fallible, uh, although, you know, let's be real, probably don't ever buy an Invicta. But seriously, there are no rules. I can't tell you how many people in my comment section every day are like, <laughs> he's wearing his watch on the wrong wrist. Well, first of all, I'm wearing my watch on my right wrist. Yeah, boy! Or when I put a leather strap on my baby tuna, the internet went crazy. You're not allowed to wear leather on a diver, you idiot! And then you have the people saying, well, you can't wear a diver at all because you're not a scuba diver. Or how about these geniuses that tell you you're not allowed to talk about something you don't personally own? Wow. Wow, 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 wow. Yeah, critical thinking out the window. And then there's the group think, you know? Oh, you gotta spend more money on a J version SKX than a K version SKX. Oh, uh, you know, Swiss watches are the best, and if you buy anything but Swiss, you're an idiot. Or how about the great old wives' tale that quartz watches are bad? I love my Seiko tuna. Guys, there's a whole lot of weird rules in the watch collecting world. You don't have to listen to any of them. Wear whatever you want. Wear what makes you happy. You don't have to wear your watch on a specific wrist. Typically, you'd wear it on your non-dominant hand just because it's more comfortable, but hey, you don't need to follow that rule. That's fine. If you can find a strap large enough, wear it as a belt buckle. That'd be pretty cool, actually. I might do that and sell it at the Time Teller shop. And guys, again, the group think is just as detrimental, just as silly in this hobby. I feel like one dude woke up one morning and was like, hey, the 7S26 movement really should have hacking and hand wind. I wonder why it doesn't. And then, you know, as time went on, he kept telling someone and then that someone told another someone and then that someone told another someone. And then this weird game of telephone that is the watch collecting world uh, just you know, started regurgitating that the 7S26 movement is bad, which it's not. It's kind of basic, doesn't have hacking or hand wind, but it's not bad. But again, this group think just perpetuated something that is not true. And that's just one example, whatever. Moving on, number five, the fifth mistake every watch collector makes is uh, buying watches to impress others. Okay, I hear it in my comment section all the time. I hear it in my inbox every day. Don't buy something for someone else. Like, don't buy something for yourself in order to impress someone else. If you wanna buy someone a gift, go, go ahead, do it. People always ask me, what's the most impressive this, or what's the best that? And of course, these are all kind of subjective, uh, and I understand when people say what's the most impressive, they might mean from like a technical standpoint, mechanical standpoint, finishing standpoint, that's fine. But when you start asking me, what would really impress this person? What looks the most uh, you know, flashy. How can I get more people to pay attention? Well, do you really want people to immediately pay attention to your watch? I feel like in some circumstances that's a bad thing. Uh, that's number one. Number two, I wouldn't want the first thing people notice about me to be my watch. That's why I've grown this glorious beard. And another thing is, in general, people won't notice. People won't pay attention or care about what you're wearing. I mean, people talk trash about me all the time and that's perfectly fine, I put myself out there, but in real life, I don't think people really notice me all that much, so I'm not gonna buy something in order to impress someone that literally nine times out of 10 doesn't even know I exist. That's, you know, that's perfectly fine. You just stop buying things in order to impress another person. Buy something to impress yourself, to make yourself happy. That's how you really have fun. And piggybacking off of that point, the sixth mistake watch collectors make is uh, comparing their own collection to someone else, okay? Um, I get this a lot, you know, I've been blessed to share my collection, my various uh, goings on here with you guys, uh, fellow watch collectors, but I don't want to get it twisted. I don't want you guys looking at my collection and comparing it to your own, because guess what? I have a lot of mentors. I have a lot of watch collectors that I look up to that have uh, vintage Pateks, vintage Vacherons, crazy watches that I would love to own, and uh, I don't get caught up comparing myself to them. I get inspired, I get motivated, maybe, but um, I don't look at my collection and stack it up against theirs. It just doesn't make sense. We're different people. So whether it's comparing it to me or anyone else, don't compare your collection to someone else's. Please. Doesn't make sense. Moving on to the seventh mistake watch collectors make. They confuse price with quality and enjoyment. Now, I get questions about this so often, I'm probably going to make another episode about it. You know what? Uh, I, I literally will. My Friday rant is going to be about this right here. Don't confuse price 
with the amount of enjoyment you will get because there are a lot of really expensive crappy watches that are not fun at all and there's a lot of really inexpensive watches that I wear all the freaking time and I absolutely love. Yeah, it's just like you wouldn't compare your collection to someone else's. Don't think spending a ton of money on a watch means that it's going to be the most fun watch ever. It's just, that's not how it works. Moving on to the eighth mistake watch collectors make. While I was kind of compiling certain things for this episode, I thought of this and it made me kind of laugh in my office. I was just laughing at my desk because I realized how often I see this and how funny and simple it is, so I'm just throwing it in here. Uh, a lot of watch collectors confuse lug width to lug to lug. And those are very different measurements, okay? Incredibly different measurements. I get a lot of questions about this on my site. Of course, I always measure lug to lug. I always measure diameter. And I often have the lug width just in case someone wants to know what straps they can put on their watch if they're gonna buy one. But yeah, when people confuse lug width and lug to lug, it can get very confusing. So here's a short little like crash course on that. The number one indicator to how big or small a watch will look on your wrist is the lug to lug. That's from here to here. Of course, these are known as the watch's lugs. And a lot of what people get mixed up is lug to lug versus lug width. Okay, the lug width is the space in between the lugs where the strap goes. That's going to tell you, this measurement is going to tell you exactly what size strap or bracelet you will need. The lug to lug tells you the space across the lugs, okay? The ninth mistake watch collectors make is thinking their 30 meter water resistance rated dress watch can actually go down 30 meters worth of water. Again, that's not at all how it works. Uh, they might be pressure tested, but as far as moisture testing, that is, you know, that, that's a different thing. Every watchmaker will tell you water resistance rating is the most confusing thing ever to actual watch wearers. Guys, you are not going to be able to take a Seiko Presage with its 30 meter water resistance rating down even a foot of water, that thing is going to flood. Here's another example. My longtime viewers will know what I'm about to talk about. Uh, I have a Breitling Navitimer, okay? That thing has a 30 meter water resistance rating. Uh, I was by a pool in Rancho Mirage, it's like by Palm Springs, and uh, the thing ended up at the bottom of a pool. I wasn't wearing it. I think it got flung off some towels and ended up at the bottom of a pool and it flooded. That pool was not over 30 meters. It's not like that was a 31 meter deep pool. But let's just move on to the 10th and final mistake that watch collectors make, guys. And this is, this one's a doozy. All right. Ooh, I had to build it up a little bit. But seriously, the, the, the tenth mistake that bothers me the most, this is like the most infuriating mistake that I see other watch collectors make, uh, it's that they don't wear their dang watches, or they buy a watch and they're too scared to wear it. Hoo -hoo. Or they see me wearing it and they'll comment uh, under a picture I take, they're like, whoa, you actually wear that? Why would you actually wear that? Because uh, I freaking bought it. Guys, don't spend money on a watch that you're going to be too scared to wear. Just period, okay? That's like, it, it just confounds me. Why would anybody do that? I have a Vacheron from 1945. I wear it all the freaking time. Uh, I have a Grand Seiko J14070, the first Grand Seiko ever. I wear it all the freaking time. I'm not gonna baby these watches. I bought it because it brings me enjoyment. I don't just go home, open up the safe, and look at it for a little while, and then put it back, and then never see it again. No, like, I wear them. I like wearing watches. I'm a watch collector, but first and foremost, I'm a watch wearer. And my cat is yelling. I don't know if you can hear her, but she agrees. She agrees with me. She agrees. So yeah, guys, wear your watches. Have fun with your watches. Don't compare your watches to anyone else and don't buy the first watch you see. Just simple rules of thumb. But again, there are no rules. Wow. I am a computer. But there you have it, guys. If you enjoyed this episode, if you learned something new and you had a little chuckle, go ahead, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Hit that bell icon so you don't miss out on any of the awesome content we're putting out here. Six a week, guys. Monday, Wednesday, Friday with a live stream Q&A every Saturday. And if you're a channel member, you get two extra pieces of content every single freaking piece of week. All you gotta do, uh, wait, every single week. 
I don't know, I think I had a little bit of a stroke, but uh, guys, just hit the join button next to the subscribe button. It's like $4.99 a month and you become a certified T3 bot and you get six pieces of content a week. I don't know why that was so difficult. Guys, like, comment, and subscribe. Share this with everyone you know. I'm Jory Goodman, the time teller. And always remember, I didn't invent time. I just tell it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah.